state of the art. Thank you very much, Dr. Nguyen, um, dear Professor Nguyen, dear Dr. Nguyen, dear Wolfgang, dear colleagues in Vietnam and dear ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's my great pleasure to be able to contribute to this virtual Vietnamese German cardiology symposium here um, tonight. And I hope that we will be able to meet in person next year again. So um, I would like to start my talk uh, with the first left main PCI that has been performed uh, worldwide who invented it. Um, it has taken place in um, Germany and Frankfurt, uh, to be honest. And Andreas Grünzig himself, his fourth um, PTCA was a patient with a left main stenosis he treated, as you can see here, uh, with the fluoroscopic images. The 24th and back in 1977. So a very and since the first three um, moving pictures say more than a thousand words. I would like to start with a case example. And this is an 81 year old gentleman um, that presented to our hospital with NSTEMI, so an acute setting. And if you um, calculate the syntax score to quantify the complexity of the coronary artery disease in this patient, you calculate a syntax score of 32. So, what um, do we see in, here in this example? We have a um, stenosis of the um, LAD, which seems quite uh, severely calcified. And we have a stenosis um, of the left main, a distal left main stenosis that maybe also involves uh, the circumflex artery. So if you take a look at the European uh, Society of Cardiology guidelines that have been updated back in 2018, you see uh, this at a first glance quite complex scheme. But to summarize a little bit better, um, I would like to um, show you this um, more simplified um, algorithm that has been published by the German Cardiac and Cardiothoracic Society. And if we um, look for our patient here in the scheme, we see a 1A recommendation if this patient would undergo cabbage. We will talk on this later. And we see a 2A recommendation for, uh, this means uh, left main, uh, with a syntax score of 32. But if the syntax score would have been a little bit higher, then we see already a three recommendation. So this patient should not undergo PCI. He um, should better undergo cabbage. But, and there was uh, the main message of the last slide, uh, obviously, um, PCI should only be considered if the heart team is concerned about the surgical risk or if the patient refuses cabbage after adequate counsel. So what evidence do we have right now for the treatment of three vessel and left main disease? And let's start um, with the mother of all studies, the syntax trial published here 12 years ago by Patrick C. Royce. And as you can see here, after the first year, PCI compared to cabbage, there's no mortality difference. Also, the combined maze endpoint was not, uh, the combined heart endpoint was not that different, but uh, maze was uh, significantly higher. Um, for the PCI arm um, triggered, as you can see here in the lower left corner, by repeat revascularization. So what is the situation 10 years later in this syntax trial? If you take a look at these four Kaplan-Meier uh, graphs, we see here regarding the primary endpoint still uh, a detectable but non-significant uh, uh, non difference for, for PCI compared to cabbage. We see no difference for patients with left main disease. We see no difference, interestingly, for patients suffering from diabetes after 10 years. That has been a little bit different after five years, you might um, remember. The only subgroup we see a difference uh, regarding the treatment of uh, um, PCI is three vessel disease. So patients with three vessel disease only without left main regardless whether they were suffering from diabetes or not, they had a, a mortality disadvantage compared to cabbage after 10 years. So um, if one study is not enough, you can do meta-analysis um, of different uh, um, and more studies. And this has been published by the colleagues uh, in the Netherlands and Lancet three years ago. Um, if you sum up more than 7,000 patients from 11 RCTs and this um, 
uh, meta-analysis, you can see here for, the, for three vessel disease, a significant difference um, and uh, patients with PCI had a higher mortality compared to cabbage patients as shown in the syntax trial. And if you take a look at the subgroup analysis um, regarding left main disease, you don't see any mortality difference at all. But to be honest, do these trials represent standard of care right now? I mean, these results have been 10 years ago uh, published. Um, and if we take a closer look at these studies, the syntax score was used to quantify disease complexity. This is still uh, um, our current recommendation in the guidelines, but this has to be questioned, at least from my uh, standpoint. In these studies, early generation drug eluting stents have been used that we wouldn't use anymore in our practice. Uh, um, remember the um, Texas stent that has been uh, used primarily in syntax and also the freedom trial. In these um, studies, the rates of FFR or IFR guided strategy had been very low or even non-existent in the syntax trial. Most of the trials didn't use intravascular imaging to guide PCI optimization. And um, a very um, a critical disadvantage in the syntax trial was the low rate of complete revascularization that was more than 57% in the PCI arm. And something that has to be discussed is that only low risk patients have been included in these trials. So the syntax score, I think this is quite clear, um, has been used in these studies. It has a, still a 1B recommendation in the guidelines, but as some of you might know, it has been uh, become a little bit more complex to calculate the score as it is only available as, a, as an app for Android or iOS anymore, and there's no uh, web-based calculator anymore. If we take a look at um, next generation DES here in the SPIRIT 4 trial published also 11 years ago, there's a clear significant um, difference compared to these early generation drug eluting stents with more than one third reduction of MACE uh, in this study here published in the New England Journal. If you take a look, and I'm going to this very quickly due to reasons of time, I hope uh, um, I can apologize for this. If you take a look at the FAME-1 trial, if you compare an FFR-guided PCI strategy um, compared to an angiography-guided uh, uh, strategy only, then you still have a maze reduction and these green marked endpoints are all significant. You have a maze reduction of 28% compared to the strategy that has been used in the syntax trial. And if we take an even closer look at the FAME-1 trial, what else did we learn from this trial? We learned that angiography is inaccurate in assessing the functional significance of coronary stenosis when compared with FFR. You can see here that um, angiography um, assessed stenosis between 50 and 70% only have been 35% uh, positive when measured by um, FFR. And even more interesting, uh, even stenosis between 70 and 90 percent uh, um, diameter stenosis have been only 80 percent positive by FFR. So this is a strategy that has to be questioned in our uh, daily routine. And what else did we learn um, taken together um, when we took a look at more than 500 patients with angiography and geographically defined multivessel disease in the FAME 1 trial? When assessed by FFR, these patients uh, were downgraded and only 46% had a functional multi-vessel disease. And as you can see here, more than one third only had a one vessel disease and uh, wouldn't have been cabbage patients at all in this trial. What is also important is intravascular imaging that cannot be emphasized more because it decreases the rate of target vessel failure as shown in this quick example published by the Chinese colleagues in the ultimate trial published in, uh, three years ago in Jack. So by using IVIS in our clinical daily routine, these uh, um, colleagues have been able to reduce the rate of target vessel failure by more than 60% after one year, what is quite impressive, I would say. And taking all these strategies together, the use of next generation drug eluting stents, IVIS, FFR to optimize and guide our uh, um, stenting strategy. In the Syntax 2 trial, um, we encountered a very uh, significant difference when compared the Syntax 2, when comparing the Syntax 2 PCI arm to the Syntax 1 PCI arm with a MACE reduction of more than 40%, a myocardial infarction 
in, in function, a reduction of more than 70% and even uh, um, a reduction of the target vessel revascularization rate of more than 40% after only one year. So putting this into context, when we compare the syntax to, to uh, PCI arm, which is not a new randomized trial for sure, but if you compare to the PCI results of the syntax one trial, we um, see and experience a significant reduction of the uh, endpoint, which was even better than the PCI FFR arm from the FAME one trial. So um, these have been all studies uh, performed as randomized clinical trials. I would also present an experience from the New York State Registry as a, uh, an all-comers registry with more than 18,000 propensity score matched patients. Um, approximately half of the patients suffered from triple vessel disease and left main disease. And you, as you can see here, if we compare patients um, undergoing a PCI, multi-vessel PCI with recent um, drug diluting with recent generation drug diluting stents, then we see no difference between PCI and cabbage uh, regarding death. We see a significant difference uh, in favor of PCI for the occurrence of stroke after uh, um, PCI. And what we again observe in this registry, we observe a highly higher rate of myocardial infarction after multivessel PCI compared to cabbage. And the reason for this is quite obvious. If you take a look at the revascularization rate in these patients, and if you see and compare only the patients that had complete revascularization after um, EES means Everolimus eluting stent implantation compared to cabbage, then you see that these patients that have been completely revascularized didn't have a uh, um, difference regarding the myocardial infarction rate of the inclusion. And only these patients that have been incompletely revascularized uh, had been different rates of myocardial infarctions. So if we put in together um, the results of recent trials, uh, especially the Nobel and the Excel trial uh, um, have been discussed extensively in the last years. If you put uh, together these newer trials and compare the risk of mortality of uh, um, patients undergoing left main PCI, and these are more than 4,600 patients, then we see no mortality risk regarding uh, um, PCI versus cabbage. But again, as I've shown you from this uh, New York State Registry, we see a slightly higher rate for repeat and unplanned revascularization after PCI compared to cabbage. So if the heart team has to make a decision in this patient I've shown to you in the beginning of my talk regarding cabbage versus, P versus PCI, we have to take into account several uh, circumstances. On the one hand side, an acute illness if a patient presents with acute coronary syndrome or even worse cardiogenic shock, then this for sure favors PCI. If the patient has an unsuitable coronary anatomy to undergo PCI, has a high syntax score, multivessel disease, or maybe is suffering from diabetes, then this favors for sure a cabbage. But we have to keep in mind that our patients are very often suffering from comorbidities such as frailty, COPD, and uh, maybe other things like porcelain aorta or already underwent uh, open heart surgery in recent years. And that's something I would like uh, to emphasize and we can maybe discuss on later. The patients that have been included in these randomized contra controlled trials uh, comparing PCI versus cabbage all have been low risk patients here uh, um, reflected by the logistic euro score that we don't use anymore in these times for sure. But uh, in these days, it was our tool to quantify the operative risk of these patients. If you see syntax noble or pre combat trial, the syntax score was very low with only two point something uh, compared to daily routine. And um, if we calculate the syntax two um, score on our patient here shown in the beginning of my talk, then we have a logistic euro score of 14 point something percent and we uh, have the syntax tool score, then this is clearly in favor of PCI. And I hope you all agree that a patient presenting with acute coronary syndrome, even if he is suffering from left main disease, is an ideal candidate for PCI and not for cardiac surgery. But what do we have to do to treat this patient uh, um, properly? Um, I would say this is a typical patient that will benefit from intravascular imaging for strategy planning and sizing of the stents. 
The first step is that we will be able to evaluate the lesion significance. And um, we have many good studies showing that a minimum lumen area of more than six millimeters square in disease left main is safe for a deferral of procedure. And if the cutoff, uh, if the patient has a minimum lumen area below six, then we can go uh, for the procedure. We can characterize our lesion, see severely calcific calcified uh, parts of the vessel and especially circular parts are uh, something we have to be afraid of because this might mean that we uh, will encounter stent under expansion afterwards. We can evaluate the vessel diameter, lesion length, and um, also can assess the distal reference diameter, which is very important for sizing of our stents um, for the proximal and distal landing stone assessment and to quantify uh, the length of the lesion. And of course, the fourth step could be that we assess our implantation quality and um, take a closer look at the stents, especially in the left main for strut malapposition, stent under expansion or edge dissection. And that is something at the end of my talk, I would like to quickly take you through. In this example, in this patient, we um, did IVAS for the LAD and also the CX and of course the left main. As, as you can see here, um, we assess the MLAs of these vessels and regarding um, the minimum lumen areas in the Austin LAD, CX and also distal left main, I think you all agree that we have in this case a true complex bifurcation in Medina 111 situation. And um, if we go a little bit further and quantify uh, the lesion here as uh, shown in the IVAS uh, images. We can see here a properly expanded uh, um, odor stand in the mid LED, but we see here this uh, 360 degree calcium, severely calcified, circular, looking like a napkin ring, what might be a little bit complex um, to, uh, um, to um, uh, dilate, and maybe we would need a road ablation, uh, a thorectomy, or a shockwave in a patient like this. And we clearly see here that um, the distal left main has an uh, um, extensive calcification as well. So these are severe circular calcification that might uh, um, make our um, PCI a little bit more difficult. And then we have to think about the risks of a one stand or two stand strategy in a complex bifurcation like this. And as you know, the risk of one stand provisional standing is that you can lose the side branch, which would be a cat catastrophe in a left main uh, PCI. But we all know that a suboptimal result increases the risk for stent thrombosis and also for restenosis, as shown here in the picture of the crossroads with uh, uh, many cars. And what we learned um, regarding stenting techniques from the DK Crush 5 trial published from uh, Chinese colleagues four years ago in Jack is that if we have to deal with complex lesions in the left main, then the patients, um, uh, against all our previous experience, then the patient uh, benefit from a two stent strategy. But if we go for two stents, two stents, then they should be implanted in a DK crush stenting technique, double kissing crush technique, so that the distribution of instant restenosis is uh, um, more beneficial for the patient during follow up, as shown here in this uh, um, quick example from the Chinese colleagues. So this is a final result after DK crush stenting in the left main with kissing balloons and final pot. And I would say from a fluoroscopic standpoint, this looks quite nicely, but uh, um, we, as you can imagine, also assess this final result with Iris and we're, we're happy uh, with the final result for this patient. So let me um, sum up uh, regarding uh, state of the art of left main disease in these days. Um, PCI with new generation drug eluding stents confers to similar outcomes as cabbage in terms of mortality throughout five years. I hope I could convince you uh, regarding this. PCI, as I've shown you, is associated with less periprocedural morbidity regarding stroke, acute kidney injury, major bleeding, and so on. But cabbage is also as associated with better protection from recurrent ischemic events after periprocedural uh, period. Um, this is to say spontaneous myocardial infarction or repeat revascularization. And um, you can call this maybe a better sustainability for the young patient and the diabetic patient when he undergoes cabbage compared to PCI. But as always in, uh, in clinical daily routine, 
volume outcome relationship, uh, intravascular imaging and the appropriate technique plays an important role for left main PCI and the same for triple vessel disease. Evidence is growing that mortality for cabbage and PCI with second and even uh, a newer generation DES is quite similar compared to cabbage. The that's uh, the reason why the decision um, about cabbage and PCI should be based on uh, several uh, things. First, the ability to completely revascularize the patient, comorbidities, and um, if the patient is suffering from acute or stable disease, and weighing these short-term risks of death and stroke with cabbage, um, we should think about the long-term benefit, as I told you before, for the left main pa patients, uh, reducing the risk of repeat revascularization and myocardial infarction. But something that also has to be discussed, discussed is patient's preference. Um, if a patient doesn't want to undergo PCI or cabbage, then we should not force him to. And this can only happen after um, um, counseling um, of the heart team. And something which will elucidate the situation, hopefully a little bit more, will be the FAME 3 trial that uh, is enrolling patient at the moment. And uh, this trial